Hello and welcome to day 96 of our daily Bible reading. Let's begin with prayer. Come Holy Spirit, draw us in, speak to us, fill us, renew us. Amen. And today we continue in the book of Deuteronomy, chapters 29 and 30. These are the words of the covenant that the Lord commanded Moses to make with the Israelites in the land of Moab, in addition to the covenant that he had made with them at Horeb. The covenant renewed in Moab. Moses summoned all Israel and said to them, You have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land, the great trials that your eyes saw the signs and those great wonders. But to this day, the Lord has not given you a mind to understand or eyes to see or ears to hear. I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. The clothes on your back have not worn out and the sandals on your feet have not worn out. You have not eaten bread and you have not drunk wine or strong drink so that you may know that I am the Lord your God. When you came to this place, King Sion of Heshbon and King Og of Bashan came out against us for battle, but we defeated them. We took their land and gave it as an inheritance to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. Therefore observe the words of this covenant and perform them, in order that you may succeed in everything that you do. You stand assembled today all of you before the Lord your God, the leaders of your tribes, your elders, and your officials, all the men of Israel, your children, your women, and the aliens who are in your camp, both those who cut your wood and those who draw your water, to enter into the covenant of the Lord your God, sworn by an oath which the Lord your God is making with you today, in order that he may establish you today as his people, and that he may be your God, as he promised you and as he swore to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I am making this covenant sworn by an oath, not only with you, who stand here with us today before the Lord our God, but also with those who are not here with us today. You know how we lived in the land of Egypt and how we came through the midst of the nations through which you passed. You have seen their detestable things, the filthy idols of wood and stone, of silver and gold, that were among them. It may be that there is among you a man or a woman or a family or tribe whose heart is already turning away from the Lord our God to serve the gods of those nations. It may be that there is among you a root sprouting poisonous and bitter growth. All who hear the words of this oath and bless themselves, thinking in their hearts, we are safe even though we go our own stubborn ways, thus sweeping away the moist with the dry, the Lord will be unwilling to pardon them, for then the Lord's anger and passion will smoke against them. All the curses written in this book will descend on them, and the Lord will blot out their names from under heaven. The Lord will single them out from all the tribes of Israel for calamity in accordance with all the curses of the covenant written in this book of the law. The next generation, your children who rise up after you, as well as the foreigner who comes from a distant country, will see the devastation of that land and the afflictions with which the Lord has afflicted it, all its soil burned out by sulfur and salt nothing planted, nothing sprouting, unable to support any vegetation, like the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, which the Lord destroyed in his fierce anger. They and indeed all the nations will wonder, why has the Lord done thus to the land? What caused this great display of anger? They will conclude it is because they abandoned the covenant of the Lord, the God of their ancestors, which he made with them when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. They turned and served other gods, worshiping them, 
gods whom they had not known and whom he had not allotted to them. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against that land, bringing on it every curse written in this book. The Lord uprooted them from the, their land in anger, fury, and great wrath, and cast them into another land, as is now the case. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the revealed things belong to us and to our children forever, who observe all the words of this law. Chapter 30, God's Fidelity Assured When all these things have happened to you, the blessings and the curses that I have set before you, if you call them to mind among all the nations where the Lord your God has driven you, and return to the Lord your God, and you and your children obey him with all your heart and with all your soul, just as I am commanding you today, then the Lord your God will return you from your captivity and have compassion on you, gathering you again from all the peoples among whom the Lord your God has scattered you, even if you are exiled to the ends of the world. From there the Lord your God will gather you, and from there he will take you back. The Lord your God will bring you into the land that your ancestors possessed, and you will possess it. He will make you more prosperous and numerous than your ancestors. Moreover, the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants, so that you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, in order that you may live. The Lord your God will put all these curses on your enemies and on the adversaries who took advantage of you. Then you shall again obey the Lord observing all his commandments that I am commanding you today, and the Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all your undertakings, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your soil. For the Lord will again take delight in prospering you, just as he delighted in prospering your ancestors. When you obey the Lord your God by observing his commandments and decrees, that are written in this book of the law, because you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Exhortation to Choose Life Surely this commandment that I am commanding you today is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, Who will go up to heaven for us and get it for us, so that we may hear it and observe it? Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, Who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it? No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away, and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall certainly perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him, for that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Luke chapter 11, verse 37 through chapter 12, verse 7. Jesus denounces Pharisees and experts in the law. While he was speaking, a Pharisee invited him to dine with him, so he went in and took his place at the table. The Pharisee was amazed to see that he did not first wash before dinner. Then the Lord said to him, Now 
you Pharisees clean the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside you are full of greed and wickedness. You fools, did not the one who made the outside make the inside also? So give as alms those things that are within, and then everything will be clean for you. But woe to you, Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and herbs of all kinds and neglect justice and the love of God. It is these you ought to have practiced without neglecting the others. Woe to you, Pharisees, for you love to have the seat of honor in the synagogues and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces. Woe to you, for you are like unmarked graves on which people unknowingly walk. One of the experts in the law answered him, Teacher, when you say these things, you insult us too. And he said, Woe also to you experts in the law, for you load people with burdens hard to bear, and you yourselves do not lift a finger to ease them. Woe to you, for you build the tombs of the prophets whom your ancestors killed. So you are witnesses and approve of the deeds of your ancestors, for they killed them, and you build their tombs. For this reason the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will kill and persecute, so that this generation may be charged with the blood of all the prophets shed since the foundation of the world, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, it will be charged against this generation. Woe to you experts in the law, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You did not enter yourselves, and you hinter hindered those who were entering. When he went outside, the scribes and the Pharisees became hostile to him and began to interrogate him about many things, lying in wait for him to catch him in something he might say. Chapter 12, A Warning Against Hypocrisy Meanwhile, when the crowd had gathered by the thousands, so that they trampled on one another, he began to speak first to his disciples. Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees, that is, their hypocrisy. Nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have whispered behind closed doors will be proclaimed from the housetops. Exhortation to Fearless Confession I tell you, my friends, do not fear those who kill the body and after that can do nothing more. But I will show you whom to fear. Fear the one who, after killing, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear that one. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten in God's sight. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Psalm 78 God's Goodness and Israel's Ingratitude A Maskil of Asaph Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have known, heard and known, that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and His might and the wonders that He has done. He established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which He commanded our ancestors to teach to their children that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and rise up and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God, and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments, and that they should not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast, whose spirit was not faithful to God. The Ephraimites, armed with the bow, turned back on the day of battle 
They did not keep God's covenant and refused to walk according to his law. They forgot what he had done and the miracles that he had shown them. In the sight of their ancestors, he worked marvels in the land of Egypt, in the fields of Zoan. He divided the sea and let them pass through it and made the waters stand like a heap. In the daytime, he led them with a cloud and all night long with a fiery light. He split rocks open in the wilderness and gave them drink abundantly as from the deep. He made streams come out of the rock and caused waters to flow down like rivers. Yet they sinned still more against him, rebelling against the Most High in the desert. They tested God in their heart by demanding the food they craved. They spoke against God, saying, Can God spread a table in the wilderness? Even though he struck the rock so that water gushed out and torrents overflowed, can he also give bread or provide meat for his people? Therefore, when the Lord heard he was full of rage, a fire was kindled against Jacob, his anger mounted against Israel, because they had no faith in God and did not trust his saving power. Yet he commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down on them manna to eat and gave them the grain of heaven. Mortals ate of the bread of angels. He sent them food in abundance. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens, and by his power he led out the south wind. He rained flesh upon them like dust, winged birds like the sand of the seas. He let them fall within their camp all around their dwellings, and they ate and were well filled, for he gave them what they craved. But before they had satisfied their craving, while the food was still in their mouths, the anger of God rose against them, and he killed the strongest of them and laid low the flower of Israel. Proverbs chapter 12, verses 19 and 20. Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue lasts only a moment. Deceit is in the mind of those who plan evil, but those who counsel peace have joy. This has been the Word of God and the Word of Life. Thanks be to God, and we'll see you tomorrow.